Hey, what up, gangsters and gangsteresses? Since mysterious JG, your homeboy in the digital age. Um, yeah, so I haven't played Mass Effect 2 in a minute, as the kids say, but we're back with more mass action. Um, so I don't know that I'm gonna have a super long play session, but I generally, uh, if I'm going to go around giving people little updates on what's going on in my life, little short vlogish type of crap at the beginning of the videos, I'll do it in whatever my least popular series is. And oddly enough, because I wouldn't have guessed it, Mass Effect 2, despite being the most beloved and bestest ever Mass Effect game, according to most fans, um, is the series on my channel that, uh, and I keep whinging about it and whining about it in every video, which is totally making more people want to watch. But yeah, this is kind of the video that it seems like I don't have a ton, ton of people following, so... I don't feel too guilty in pointing out, because I think probably uh, the people following this is the highest percentage of people who are just following all my stuff. I passed another section of the CPA. That is three sections down, one left to go. So far, three for three on passing on the first try, which is, you know, I'm pretty pleased with that. And um, the section that I just most recently passed is the one that relates most directly to what I already do for a living, so I was expecting to pass it. My big thrill was when I got the score for the finance section of the CPA exam, which has fascinating topics along the lines of, you know, uh, how much gain do you recognize on a sale leaseback transaction, uh, and it will vary depending on different criteria, and how would you book the journal entries related to a sale leaseback transaction, and blah, you know. That kind of fun, interesting stuff I know you want to hear about in great detail. So I passed that one with a perfect score. Perfect score means I got exactly enough points to pass with no extra leftover points I didn't need. So, yeah, basically, had I gotten one more question wrong, I would have uh, not passed. But I got exactly enough to pass, so that's awesome. I'm feeling pretty good with only one section left to go. And in theory, once I actually finish the thing, I'll uh, have more time to LP than I've had. So, um... Hopefully you'll see more solo effort stuff um, as is. Like this LP, for example, updates very sporadically, but the LPs together with Bobo are carrying my channel because, yeah, it's the when I have time to actually LP is when I'm hooking up with Bobo. Anyway, that's enough of that ch chit chat. Let's get on to throwing concussive shot, being more effective on a weightless target. <sighs> you got to pull on your enemy first. Don't use pull on them. Your capitalized pull. That sounds fine. That sounds good. Use pull. Pull being a capital. Sorry, a um, proper noun being a specific technique in the game. Use pull on your enemy first. I like the idea of pull on your enemy first. Just tug them. Uh, it's been a really long time since I caught up with my teammates, so I probably ought to do that. No but messages for you, Commander. Thanks. Bit of kicks. <laughs> Deeply and needlessly disrespectful to the fairer sex, just calling a random NPC lady kicks. Uh, I can't help it, folks. It is in my nature to be an ass. Let's talk to Morden. Probably my favorite character in the game, actually. I'm thinking about the crew. Um, there are some really fun characters that are introduced in this game. Sadly, most of them are not um, squad mates in Mass Effect 3. I mean, mild spoilers, since I'm not telling you which ones are which. Most of them do not... Most of them come back in Mass Effect 3 as cameos. Part of the thing is that in this game, um, in Mass Effect 1, there was really... It was possible for Rex to die, and either Ashley or Kaiden must die. There's no way to save them both. It's literally impossible, however, to kill Tally or Garrus in Mass Effect. They always survive. And I feel like I'm blanking on another character, Liara. Yeah. Tally, Garrison, and Liara always survive. Mass Effect 2, on the other hand, anybody that is a is a squad mate for you, uh, is they they engineer the last mission so that you they can all die. And really, and I've talked about this a little bit in the comments. Matter of fact, I should have gone back and read through. I had a really good uh, discussion, just you know, back and forth with one or two commentators in this series. I do I do treasure the people who actually write in a comment on the series, by the way, because they're usually pretty thoughtful comments, too. And now I'm, I'm just totally not even remembering the name of the person I was interacting with. Talking about, you know, they, they were... 
you know, and I'm always leery because uh, I used to spend a lot more time on forums for, you know, than I do now. But you would get on forums about gaming, and uh, people would be like, oh, they'd always want to start some kind of brand war. I used to want, I used to, to get on pro wrestling forums. You know, I don't think, there's probably sci-fi fans who are like, you watch pro wrestling, that's so lame. There are wrestling fans who are like, you like sci-fi, that's so lame, you know, whatever. But yeah, it would always be back in the days when I was on forums, people would get like, oh, WCW is the worst ever, WWF is best, and vice versa. And ECW is best than either of them, and they would just want to argue about it. So, you know, I had a guy who was commenting on how, you know, I used to really like the Bioware games, but I'm getting frustrated. It's like they really only have one way to tell a story. And uh, and then you get into this, you sort of spiral into this thing, and I haven't reread your comment, dude, so I'm probably attributing a bunch of stuff other people have said and now sloshing it in with what your thoughts you raised. But other people are like, you know, oh, well, the Bioware, you see stuff like Bioware stories are awesome. Everyone thinks Bethesda is so great, but they suck ass. Bioware is best ever, and then like, no, Bioware worst ever, Bethesda is God. And back and forth, and commenting on the two styles of two different groups, and you know, Rockstar, and other other game, other companies that actually are getting reputation for doing good games. Um, and the thing that that kept coming up with. Uh, Bioware and Mass Effect in particular, because I don't have a great knowledge of Dragon Age or uh, the Star Wars New Republic games. I know they exist, and that uh, they're they're somewhat similar in in certain approaches, but obviously very different setting. And uh, one of the big problems is that you know you've got this universe that's centered around Shepard or whoever because you want the player character to feel important, and they really go out of their way to sometimes I think probably going too far with this. They always want to give you choices and and do their best to make it feel like the choices matter. And then they fall into this trap where they can either present the illusion that choices matter and then ultimately they don't so that they continue to have uh, so then if sequels unroll, they still have you know, plot lines that are locked in that, that, that player choices can't totally destroy their plot lines. Or they can make your, your choices count, but then they have to have these really vague plots. They can't have a lot of strong characters because, you know, as somebody pointed out, I hadn't really thought about this, and I certainly can't validate their numbers, but if it costs like 100 bucks an hour to get voice actors in studio, do you really want to record like 30 different variations on a single conversation between Garrus and Shepard, depending on how eight different discrete decisions made during Mass Effect 1 and Mass Effect 2 will play out in Mass Effect 3. It's it, it's really challenging. And uh, I think Bioware generally does a decent job, but they set themselves an impossible task. We'll certainly have more time for this by, we, by when we get to Mass Effect 3, because although I've only ever played through Mass Effect 3 using characters imported from Mass Effect 2 who had in turn been imported from Mass Effect 1, I have heard and tend to believe that Mass Effect 3 is a very shallow game if you just start out and uh, you don't really have investment in any of the characters because there really is this expectation that you already know who people are and what's going on. And I can't imagine how dull Mass Effect 3 would be if you let most of your squad mates in 2 die. But again, most of the squad mates in 2 are not major characters in Mass Effect 3, but that's exactly why. They didn't know which ones are going to be alive at the end of your playthrough. So they weren't going to make, like, Morden have a huge role in multiple plot lines. And the, 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 the approach that they took, and I'm just going way off on a tangent, I didn't need to go on. The approach they took is that if Morden dies, I believe there's another Solarian character who comes in and fulfills his plot function. And uh, if Rex is dead, Rex's brother is the, the ruler of the Krogan. And the Krogan are going to pop up, obviously, in Aspect 3. Um... Garrus, Tally, I mean, I don't even know. There is a plot line related to the Quarians. I don't even know how that plays out if Tally's not around. Um, you know, it's just, yeah. Clearly you want to, uh, you, you know, you're going to enjoy the game more if you take better care of your crew members and keep them around. But obviously there are also storylines that are just dramatic and exciting. If everybody lives, then that has its own problems where it's just like, you know, all this tense music and excitement and stuff, but nobody ever dies, that's, you know, that's one of the, the problems of PG Adventure. An older fan watches PG Adventure, and it's like, you know, after a while, I'm just not really that worried about whether or not my heroes are going to succeed, because they always succeed, and nothing ever goes wrong for them. 
Anyway, good god, if I actually want to do anything during this video but just talk to myself, I better start talking more. Shepard, how can I help? Have you got a minute to talk? Actually, wanted to talk. Medical matters. I want to examine Aware that mission is gone. dangerous. Different species react differently to stress. Recommend or do. you come by a great deal. Have had other species become attracted to me before. Awkward. Not interested. You're joking with me. You get hit on. Thanks anyway. I'm tempted to guy. I don't know if I should go with you're joking with me or thanks anyway. I'll go with you're joking with me. Wait a minute, Borden. You're just yanking me around, aren't you? Shocking suggestion. Doctor patient confidentiality, a sacred trust. Would never dream of mockery. Enjoy yourself while possible, Shepard. We'll be here studying cell reproduction. Much simpler. Less alcohol and mood music required. I love Morton. Morton. I love whoever that guy is. Alright, well, it looks like I might have uh, done enough side missions uh, to get. What the fuck are you wearing, Jacob? To get some bonus dialogue. Oh, I guess he's got the alternate costume on because that's the last one I used when he was in combat. Yeah, so I might have a little extra short and silly. Dialogues with multiple characters because I've played so many side missions. Commander, can I help you with something? I'm more interested in just talking for a bit. Give the other I'm good, Shepard. Ready for anything. We live, we'll get loud. Hook it up, bro. Spill some drinks on the Citadel. I'm more interested in just talking for a bit. I'm good, Shepard. Ready for anything. Hook it up. We <laughs> we'll get loud. And spill some drinks on the Citadel. Somehow he's. He's reminding me of Snow from Final Fantasy. I'm more interested in just talking for a bit. I'm good, Shepard. Ready for oh, any stupidest thing. We'll ever. talk later. Commander. We'll hug it out later. I don't feel like we hugged it out enough. But you know, we got a good start on the, the hugging. The hugging and bugging. I know it's like getting confused. That doesn't actually lead me to an elevator. That's where I go to occasionally tell the elusive men to suck my nuts. Don't say a word. Alright, so head for the CIC. No, I'm already in the CIC. Damn it, I don't know how things work. Let's see if we can go hug it out with uh, Thane or Zaid. I'm good, Shepard. We'll get drunk on the Citadel or whatever Jacob was saying. <laughs> There's a 1 in 100,000 chance that Kasumi will have something interesting to say. I gotta be getting close to the point where I'm asked to choose a love interest, and honestly, I still haven't decided. Um, I mean, none of it matters. It's just, well, <laughs> I say that as though it was ever a possibility that it really matters. It's like, no. You get the opportunity to go in a totally different direction than the third game, and the third game really draws your attention to just how stupid it is if you spend a lot of time, or, you know, Really, really agonizing over who Shepard should try to get it on with. Commander, what can I do for you? What can I do for you? And now I'm there. You have a minute, Miranda? Of course. I've been meaning to speak with you, in fact. I'd like to stand here and show off my bum. Oh, she's going to take the bum pose? Oh no, she's actually going to sit down. I wanted to apologize. I didn't fully believe you'd be up to the task, and it seems I was wrong. The task of pleasing my bit, Frankly, Shepard. based on what I've seen, I wish Cerberus had recruited you earlier. Why do you like Cerberus? So do I, Cerberus is wrong. You know, again, either of these paths would, would work. I don't need more Paragon points, but, you know... I think, honestly, if I were having this conversation, as hard as it is to put yourself in the position of a guy from space who's been brought back to life by Cerberus, I wouldn't just immediately jump up and say, Cerberus sucks or I would probably just ask her what she thinks. With your intelligence, you could have landed any job you wanted. Why choose this? It's a bunch of crap, man. Because I still envy the time Morden spent with the special tasks group, working with people as smart as he was. Cerberus never tells me that something is impossible. They give me my resources and say do it. And they've given you even more. 
a new life, a new ship, the elusive man's personal attention. Which is what I really want. Uh, I just keep going top right because I assume that's always the, the path for Paragon, but this is obviously the path for hitting on her. But no, she does sound a little grumpy. But what the hell is hit on her? The best thing he did was to put you on my squad. You'd have done fine without me. I may not have believed it before, but I don't have what you do. That fire that makes someone willing to follow you into hell itself. I'm not itself. the main character of the game like you are. Look at my bot, Shepard. Bum looker. My father got me the best jeans money could buy. Guess it wasn't enough. You always bring that up. <laughs> Honestly, is this the Paragon path? The other two versions also sound pretty, you know, eh. You always bring up your genetic tailor. It really bothers you, doesn't it? You and Bashir this should get together. This is what I am, Shepard. I can't hide it. The intelligence, the looks, even the biotics. But mostly he the paid looks. for all of that. Every one of your accomplishments is due to your skill. The only things I can take credit for are my mistakes. Well, I mean, didn't he genetically program your mistakes? I can't admire your body or your mind. You give your father too much credit. I see. I wouldn't yeah, have mentioned the he body gave you gifts, if I was trying to be. But you can be proud of what you've done with him. Oh, thank you. You can be proud of the way you shake that money maker he gave you. Perhaps I wouldn't mind if you admired my body. Ah, shit. Okay. Well, I guess this is the moment of truth then. Um, the only two candidates in my mind really were uh, Miranda and Tally because <laughs> Jack. You know, she's gonna fucking kill you in your sleep. And, uh... Honestly, the only thing I'm trying to think of is which uh, which one leads to funnier dialogue in Mass Effect 3 when Ashley comes back into the picture. And I think it's probably funnier in Mass Effect 3 if you get it on with Tally. The only problem with get it on with Tally is that she's an alien. And, you know, call me a racist. But that just seems weird to me if somebody's not even your same species. Tally, I mean, it's not all about your looks, but it would be kind of nice to have some idea of what she looks like before you start, you know, doing those things. Oh, what the hell. This may or may not commit us, but, you know, let's, let's stick with human girls. You wouldn't, huh? I think I could live with it. It's only fair. You've had two years to look at me. And I was wearing less than you are. Oh, that Shepard, was tight. Wait. I, I need to think about this. I thought you were smart. Ms. Lawson? Cautious, Commander Shepard. But interested. Very interested. Let me go For read now, one of my romance work. novels about a girl on the I'll plains being rescued by a cowboy in an open shirt and... Alright, well, I got a lot of Paragon points for Mac and Honor. And uh, we wandered back into her bedroom to chat about her daddy issues. I hadn't thought about that before, but yeah, it's like a hot chick and you're totally playing up for daddy issues. I haven't had a meal like that in a long time. I didn't think Rupert had it in him. Oh, he did, folks. He's been eating Rupert's excrement. You've been eating things that were literally inside Rupert and were pa processed and passed through by his body. Garris, you want to have sex? Shepard, need me for something? Have you got a minute? Can it wait for a bit? I'm in the middle of some calibration. You know what, Garrus? Fuck Talk you. Talk to you later, Garrus. Jesus. I'll be here if you need me. It's like, you're just still sore because I didn't let you murder that one, dude. Seriously, Shepard? I mean, Garrus, like, I just went and had, like, an extra bit of dialogue revealing new and exciting blah 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 with, um fucking warden of all people and you can't talk to me. Alright, see what the hell Bane's flashing back to now. I remember back in the 60s, Woodstock. Do you need something? Have a few minutes to talk? Of course, Shepard. Join me. I'm still not curious. I yet? care about you. Yes. It's still difficult. It's difficult. It seems less angry. Will you hear my confession, Shepard? Fuck no. I mean... You know, I'd love to hear your uh, confession, but the guns need to be calibrated there. I wouldn't talk to you if I didn't want to hear what you have to say. When I married Erica, the Hanar let me leave their service to raise a family, but I had no other skills, so I freelanced. When Erica was killed, 
I pursued those responsible. Mm -hmm. Once I'd eliminated them, I had no goal. I accepted the Dantius Commission because I didn't know what else to do. Hmm. Well, nothing to live for. Great. Glad you're working for me. Not the healthiest attitude to take on a mission. You're right, it's not. Looking back now, it's clear I'd resigned myself to death. I mm -hmm. would have fulfilled my contract. If Nasana's guards caught me afterwards, it would have been a good death. But someone else was pushing to reach the target, forcing me to move faster, challenging me. I had to reach her first. Hmm. I had no idea you planned to die in there. It wasn't a plan. My body had accepted its death. My mind had been dead a long time. Your mission you know, you got issues, purpose, pal. A cause to die for. A chance to atone. I was able a field to speak of to my dreams. Son again. I can leave my body in peace. Fantastic. You mind if we take out the collectors first? You've had a hard life. You deserve some peace. Whatever may happen, so my gun is yours. Wow, we got through a whole conversation without you flashing back, dude. Pretty sweet. Like we got through an entire conversation without your eyes going all funky and you're going like The glass the grass is blowing. A stand of cedars. I am tired. So the collectors did take new cantons. Yes. Cantons? But my wife and daughter left in the nick of time. They're resting in San Francisco as we speak. What do you mean new San Francisco? Part of Space California? Hey, Samara, do you mind uh, talking to me, or you just want me to shut up so you can, uh... Oh, Kruman Patel, thank you. You just want to sit there and calibrate your guns, if you know what I'm saying. Do you mind if I stare at you? Shepard. So long, Samara. Shepard. I wanted to check in. I am always I'm happy Dunstan. to talk to you. Such an idiot. It's a good thing I make myself laugh, because I can't do it with anyone else. I wanted to check in. I'm Dunstan. <laughs> oh, JJ. You and the references. I'm interested in hearing more about Asari Justicars. I'm interested in this. Justicars kill people who ask them dumb and inane questions about Justicars. That's your Justicar fact for the day, bitch. And the distraction boobs. Uh, what's we your name? Misha, whatever. Coach. You keep talking about Just the distraction from boobs. Another era. Young Asari grow up watching vids about our adventures. Pure fiction, of course. You'll probably check out Rumble Some Roses if you like distraction boobs that much. Us, but so few Justicars exist that most have never met one. Those who do tend to be smothered by our distraction boobs. I honestly, it's going to sound crazy. I'd never really... I think after the initial play, I was like, oh, look, they gave her huge, crazy space chick knockers and never really thought about it. But yeah, I mean, the, the, this one of the, my viewers has commented on it, and yeah, they kind of went out of the way to give her big, crazy space chick knockers. Rarity of Justicars, the code, conflicting opinions, the fact that you are a ridiculous caricature with huge, over-the-top comic book knockers. There were only a few Justicars? Few Asari wish to make the sacrifices necessary to become one of us, and the training has a high casualty rate. A lot of cliff it is a life of constant danger. Throughout the entire galaxy, there are only a handful of us at any time. Man, your job sucks. Why would anyone want to be a Justicar? It is a deeply personal matter. Sometimes the most brutal path is the only honest one. Hmm, sounds pretty neat. This code of the Justicar seems central to your life. It is 5,000 <laughs> sutras of every and covers every situation ever. one can encounter. I have memorized every word. There is only the code. Mm -hmm. Sometimes justice calls for mercy. It does yeah, not there's about four and a half hundred sutras on that. Its purpose is to punish the wicked and protect the innocent. Uh, okay, well... If I tried really hard, could I think of something that your sutras don't cover? Bet you I could. The Asari I've spoken to seem conflicted about Justicars. In this Tell age, me who they are, and I will kill them. Gray everywhere. The code of the Justicar is black and white. I might seem a hero to many, but I would kill all of them if I had to. What would cause you to have to kill them? I don't know. Bad hair day. What role do you think Justicars have in Asari society? I would say that the closest human equivalent is a knight-errant, 
in your medieval lore. Perhaps mixed with a bit of samurai. And just a touch of ninja pirate robot. What does your code say about killing? The more the merrier. I am compelled to kill the wicked. If a Justicar is involved, peaceful solutions are long past. Does your code require you to feel bad about it? I love codes of justice that tell you to go around butchering everyone and then you're supposed to act sad afterward. That's my favorite. You make killing sound so casual. I remember each being I have slain. They are always in my thoughts. That is such a lame comic book cliche. I'm like, I've murdered a hundred dudes, but I see all their faces. It's like, what, you fucking, uh... Well, what's his name? Ozymandias from Watchmen? I mean, come on. It's always like that, too. It's like, oh, I'm lizard assassin guy. I can remember every face because of my f super memory. Uh, however, uh, you know, I still killed like a million dudes, which makes me a badass. But you can also think I'm cool morally because I hurt. And it's like, you know what? If you're that fucking moral, stop murdering everybody. Yeah. I don't know. I guess this game is totally getting into the fact that Shepard is essentially a soldier uh, from... Earth's military force, who's now... I mean, even in the first game, though, he's a specter. He's like, he no longer has to answer to anybody. So it's just all about how badass it is to go around getting to kill with impunity and, uh, you know, throw in some really half-assed reasons for why it's okay. Did I already ask this one? Uh, does the code forbid romantic involvement? With you, yes. It does not. However, I would never be interested in such. That part of my life is well behind me. Yeah, and as I recall, you can't romance her in this game. I was mildly surprised to find out 3 lets you do some stuff with her, I guess. But, yeah, pretty much. It's fun to actually try with with Shepard, because the... And I probably shouldn't have revealed that you can't, but Bioware is so big on, you know, male or female Shepard, either one. They can just get it on with anybody they want. Everyone finds them irresistible if you just choose the right dialogue options. It's actually really refreshing that someone just isn't interested. You could meet someone who reawakens those desires. What do you desire? I'm thousand years old. I know myself and my desires. I've got but batteries. Your curiosity is quite welcome. I'm flattered, but you ain't getting this. You ain't getting my blue tentacle good stuff, Shepard. You know about knights errant and samurai? When I knew I must leave Asari space again, I studied the history and morals of new species. When I was a maiden wandering the galaxy, humans had not yet arrived. I'm a big on watching Japanese animes. Like a Japanese anime. What did your studies tell you about us? You suck. You are more individualistic than any other species I have encountered. If three humans are in a room, there will be six opinions. I like your species. I am curious to see what you will do. I thought they made a big deal about how the, uh, the bolus were like that. Uh, whatever. What's well, better than like that? There's a video game based on a collection of short stories. It's actually a fun little game, although I don't have enough association with it to go to the trouble of trying to emulate it. Uh, but there's a game called Call Callahan's Cross Time Saloon which features humans interacting with some aliens. and But basically, ultimately, the final end result of the whole game is that humanity is put on trial, and a handful of people from a bar are the ones who have to, like, sort of defend humanity. And it turns out that all across the infinite cosmos, humans are the only species that have developed a sense of humor. And that is their unique thing they bring to the universe. And I was like, it's a sweet thought that the sense of humor, that hum humanity's sense of humor is one of our great defining characteristics of the species. But it's so arrogant to think that there would actually be other intelligent species and we're the only ones who crack a smile. <laughs> anyway. I am so fascinated by your humans and the way that you all have different opinions, even though I just revealed to you that I have to routinely murder a sorry who don't believe as I do. I should go. I'm glad we spoke. I'm gonna start glowing again now. But that's one of them things, folks. When a game actually tries to do serious world building, like they actually build a serious and involved world, that's when you can find little flaws like that for me to nitpick at. You wouldn't find... I wouldn't be able to nitpick at all the little flaws in a game that didn't actually try to give you a lot of detail. So, you know, I can respect that. Well, you mentioned something about enjoying the light, so... Fuck with you. I was just thinking about you. I hate you so much. My heart goes out to Miranda and her sister. That's a rough situation. 
Yeah, he just got new stuff. Jacob deserves better than a father like that. I probably would have wanted to shoot him too. Yeah, but does he like uh, kleptomaniac Japanese girls? I can see why Jack is the way she is. I don't like it, but I get it. Come back later. I'm sure I'll have more to talk about. Yeah, let's do some more missions and I'll have one line responses to. Come back later. I'm sure I'll have more to talk about. Yeah, nothing to say about Garrus and the whole, like, I didn't let him murder that one dude that he wanted to murder thing. I thought that was, like, so intense. Anyway, uh... Oh yeah, I gotta go to another deck. You know, we're at the end of a video and all. Don't really feel like I accomplished anything. So maybe I'll just do one mission worth of talking to everybody. Cause yeah, we are seeing new dialogue. Like I've done enough side quests that we've got new dialogue with a couple people. Uh, quite a few left though. So we got Rex first, or no, this is Gare, uh, Gula, Zaid. Back for more? Can't say I blame Taylor's pop. A man does what he has to do to survive. Ran up so, against a Batarian camp, not too different from that one. Job was to erase the whole thing from the map. Men, women, and the man in charge. Learned that day that despots are cowards. You show them you're in charge, not them, and they cry like little girls. You gotta do what it takes to survive, Shepard. I don't blame Jacob's dad. I too would have created a retardo or harem in that instance. We haven't seen a Batarian woman yet, and as far as I remember, you never actually do. Hell of a mission down there on Zoria. Can't believe Vito got away. Twenty years of tracking gone. Just like that. You're an asshole, Shepard. But I gotta let that go. We have more important things to do. I should let you go. Talk more later, Shepard. Unless I see you coming before you see me coming. You let Vito go, Shepard. I'll never forgive you. Except I obviously have, because, you know, whatever. No decisions you make actually have any real influence. Be advised, Shepard. You know, everybody's got their little Halloween colors on, because for whatever reason, the game likes throwing out black and orange combos, and I decided to go with them. Shepard. Runt. Just checking in. How you doing? I'm branching out. Got a list of enemies now. They all give me joy Nixon? when I picture cutting them, crushing them. There's this one imprint, a Solarian with the, what are they, the, the things on his head pulled apart? Bet it caused a generation of revenge. What is that, a few weeks for them? Boom! So what did you want? <laughs> Grunt, you're fucked up. You know, I kind of thought connecting with your past would bring stability. <laughs> See, now we're having fun. Me remembering good deaths, and you with your your funny human thing you're doing. I love Grunt. My job is to hurt things. Direction, control, that's your job, Battlemaster. You're why I'm a soldier, not dead or crazed like an animal. Thank you, Shepard. You gave me purpose. Now let's find something big to kill. I like Grunt. Um, I may have gone into this already. Uh, the voice actor who does Grunt, who also does like Spike and Cowboy Bebop and a lot of other stuff. I used to, like I mentioned earlier in this video, I used to hang out on forums. I really don't do that kind of thing at all anymore. Uh, and, and people always talked about how great that guy was, and I sort of thought he was overrated. I really like his work as Grunt, though. And some of that is just the, the, the writing for Grunt is fantastic, and he doesn't get the credit for that. But no, he, he really makes grunt work, uh, the voice acting. But like I said, yeah, that was a voice actor I had kind of had a grudge against because it's like, man, I kept hearing how awesome he was from people based on on the work in that one series. But I was seeing like three or four different series with him in them airing, and I wasn't seeing a whole lot of differentiation between the characters. He kept playing minor characters and, thing, and they, things, and they all sounded the same. But, man, he sunk his teeth into grunt. I really do appreciate that. Alright, Jack, you are wearing the closest thing I could get you to normal clothes. Hey. You, get into my car. Tell me something I don't know about you. Nothing to tell. Why? Answer my questions. I want to know more, and I'm not going away. Go away. I'm here to fight for you. Nothing says we have to be friends, but whatever. Something you don't know, huh? Obvious stuff, like what's up with my ink? 
or something else just as boring. You're not really interested unless it affects you. I've been through all this shit before. Yeah, you know, I don't, want I don't want her anyway, so. You're a hard person to like, Jack. Really? I had no idea. What other amazing insights do you have that I'm too stupid to see? You're tough, but you can't have survived alone all these years. When I was starting out, I ran with this girl, Manara, and her boyfriend. They knew their way around. I thought they'd help me. Right. They helped me into their bed. And when we finally did take down something big, they helped themselves to my share of the take. I knew where Jerk. it was heading, and I got him first. Never bothered with friends after that. You work pretty hard at not letting people get close. I've been with lots of people. If you're asking about a boyfriend or a girlfriend, no. It's a waste of time, and it never works. You let someone get that close, it just means they need a shorter knife. Lonely and alive works just fine. Thanks. You said lonely. So lonely. Oh, right? mate. What's with the tattoos? Some are for prisons I've been in. Some are for kills. You know, good ones. Some are for things I've good lost. Good prisons? Those aren't your business. They're nobody's business. They're not even my business. And some are because, hey, why the fuck not? You must have had friends. I'll You're go tough. with that one. I don't want to go with the damn lonely. They helped me into. I knew where it was headed. You get different top left first. options. I don't want to go with the damn lonely. Never bothered with friends after that. They sound like selfish pricks. That doesn't mean they were going to kill you. I get feelings. I don't need proof. I did the smart thing. Murder is I always smart. The smart thing if people fuck with me. That's probably something you should remember. Oh, I guess I can. I guess I have the option of doing both. I'll do the you're lonely you thing. Too. Hard I've been with lots you work pretty hard. You let someone get that close, it just means they need a shorter knife. Lonely and alive works just fine. Thanks. Seems like you miss it a little more than you want to admit. Pick every little word apart if you want, but it doesn't change the way the galaxy works. Come on, you've been around. Yeah, I was a specter. I have to go, but we should do this again. No, we really shouldn't. Wait. My turn with the questions. People usually walk by now. Why are you really asking all these things? Oh, I'm going for an Xbox up? achievement. Because if this is just about sex, maybe you should just fucking say so. Well, I want to get to know. I'm in no hurry. I want to know what makes you tick first. You don't need to know someone to sleep with them. You just have to know where to put it. Well, where do I put it with you? Okay. Maybe we'll talk later. Maybe not. Maybe now. Yeah, see, he really broke through to her when he mentioned the whole lonely thing. There's a lonely boy. Shepard, what can I do for you? Uh, if you're ready to hop into the sack now, I guess you beat Miranda. <laughs> Have you got time to talk? Sure. Uh, let me just come on, you little bushtet. Oh, sorry. I've got a small fever and I'm taking it out on the poor drive core. Don't worry, it's nothing serious. Got sloppy while doing some suit repair. Why do you get sick? I wasn't paying attention to anything you've ever said before. You're sick? Do you need help or time to rest? Really, it's not that bad. If a stray bit of bacteria could really kill us, we'd have all died by now. The fever should go away in a now, day or hold two. On. Are you Don't guys worry. like gonna it die the instant you get a germ or not? Mission. It's not even an illness, really. What we experience is actually an acute allergic reaction. Well. I smell retcon. Were your immune system stronger before the Geth drove you from your homeworld? Not as strong as those of most races, definitely. I'm not a biologist, but there's a theory about it. The theory because is bullshit, bullshit, we had three right. Plants developed symbiotic relationships with large animals to spread seeds or pollen. Uh -huh. Most viruses on our world were partially beneficial, so our immune life, really? systems evolved to be weak. They were more likely to adapt to contamination than fight it. What about other planets? You ever heard of any of them? But Quarians colonized other worlds. They couldn't all have been like that. They weren't. Most colonists went through a period of mild illness before adapting to the new environment. When the Geth took the homeworld in our colonies, the sterile environment on the flotilla ruined our immune system. Well, why did you have a sterile environment on the flotilla? Even if we colonized a new world or reclaimed our own, we'd need a long process of bioengineering to recover. Right. See, I've never really been clear on why they don't colonize a new world. 
but if you want them to be like this kind of space Jewish diaspora, then I guess they need some kind of melodramatic reason that they can't settle. They don't have to be the Jewish diaspora, they can be any diaspora, but yeah, it's kind of their deal. How exactly does the sickness work? It's an allergic reaction? Do you right. think we could die from it, the Say hunger? I get exposed to a human disease, like, what did Navigator Presley have that time? Chicken pox? I wouldn't get chicken pox, but I'd run a fever as my system reacted to the foreign presence. Depending on where it hits me, I could get other symptoms. Nausea, vomiting, everything you'd expect from being sick. It is complete bull. This is not... Oh, guys, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is not what they pitched to us last time. This is... Somebody realized that the idea that they never, ever, ever can be exposed to any foreign toxin or they immediately die was going to prevent them from writing a happy ending for these guys down the road, depending on your decisions, of course. And uh, now they're retconning. I mean... How did you get sick this time? I took some fire in a fight back on the Alarai. Nothing serious, but I needed to open my suit to check the wound. I and I did it in the properly, mess. But one of the section seals had taken some damage, and foreign matter got out of the disinfected zone. It was a stupid mistake. You always check your seals before doing local treatment. Unless you forget. Then you get a damn fever. Section seals? You can seal off part of your suit? Right. Like dropping emergency doors on a ship during a hull breach. It won't stop an infection that gets into my bloodstream, but it prevents a surface infection from spreading. Suited life sounds difficult. Do you want to break open your suit so I can stick my thing in your thing? I don't know if I could live inside a suit my whole life. We are in our suits even among family. The most intimate thing we can do with another Quarian is link our suit environments. Yeah, that sounds fine. We get sick at first, and then we adapt. It's our most important gesture of trust, of acceptance. Swapping I haven't illness. trusted anyone enough for that, though. Except, well, no Quarians. And um, you know what I mean. Uh -huh. You're embarrassed about doing it with Garrus? I appreciate the thought, Tally, and I feel the same way. But you don't have to prove anything to me. I know. Well, not that, that I know, but I, I didn't mean it like that. It's a, um, wow, it's really hot in here. It's just that their tradition also signifies a willingness for, um, intimacy. I wasn't trying to... It's not always like that. It's more... Um, how did we even end up talking about this? This is like your thing. You talked to me for eight hours straight about Quarian shit. Wait a minute. It sounds like you're suggesting something, Tally. What could I possibly be suggesting? I mean, a young woman gets rescued by a dashing commander who lets her join his crew and then goes off to save the galaxy? How could she possibly develop any kind of interest in him? Well, Tally, I, I guess I didn't know I was dashing by Corian standards because I have no idea what the fuck you look like, and I don't honestly even know if you guys know what each other looks like. You have nothing to be embarrassed about, Tally. I'm interested in this. I feel the same way about you. Miranda really? didn't jump I on didn't me right off the bat, so... You win. Right. Good. Anyway, I should get back to work. But thanks for coming by and talking. Maybe our genitals can talk later. <laughs> so, Gabby, what do you think of our new Quarian boss? Ah, she, she's right over there. Ah, she's she macking on the captain. With her head in that bucket. Don't get me wrong, it's a beautiful bucket. The whole suit is lovely, quite snug in all the right places. You know I can hear you. <laughs> anyway, that was lame. Sorry, Captain. Our comic relief doesn't always work. What can we do for you, Commander? Yeah, Carry right, on. Never mind. Will do, Commander. Carry on, my wayward son. Don't be resting you are done. No, that can't be right, because then it's lay your weary head to rest, don't you cry no more. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, that's it, right? Yeah, I talked to everybody. Okay, finally, at long last, time to end the video. Uh, first video I've recorded in a while, and we did nothing but talk. That's Mass Effect for you, folks. Anyway, uh, when we come back, I really got no choice about it. Gotta actually start a mission. Thanks for watching, guys. See you then.